Hi there, friends, and welcome to episode 26 of my Sea Eyes Challenge series. I'm Icon, and today I plan hard on achieving a third colonist for this little place here, because I feel like it's about time. Also, I want to see what kind of next trader event we'll see. I have stacked up on a really large amount of packaged survival meals by now. And the materials we need are here in plenty. First, though, we seem to have to fight off another raid from the Alobo Coalition. To my big pleasure, or... Yeah, well... How to call it in English. I'm quite happy <laughs> that these guys are actually sappers. Because sapper teams are always more vulnerable to cheese tactics let's see are they coming from several angles or is it really just that one squad yes it is just one that one squad and on top of that they are also tribals so this is going to be most likely a raid that will be fought off quite easily so since that newt person is deciding to go stray from his main squad we're going to take this guy down first there we go. That was already a pretty foolish move from their side. Squirrel is trying to go through the river, pond, whatever. Also not the smartest of decisions. And now we have our first enemies reaching the gates. I I want to change my, go my target. Gogaro is the person I want to go for first because he has a bow. There we go. Stun that person with the recurve bow from the flank and burden a possum. Still going to attack the recurve bow guy and ignore that guy just uh, going for my walls. I'm quite happy that it, that a possum didn't really bother attacking my peeps, so we already basically won. Let's just see where did Julian get his uh, hit into the leg. Okay, now, a possum. Let's check this out. Shooting, well, Lurkale, very neurotic, trigger happy, bloodlust. As of lately, I'm more and more considering to imprison somebody here. You know, the idea would be to use this as my living area and this as my prison, but. I don't feel like I want to go down that way if the raiders are this uninteresting. Okay, now let's patch up Julian while we're at it. That went really good. Overall, I feel like that raid was super easy to take down. And we got a couple of new bodies here. One, two, three, four... All right, keep storing them for the future because, you know, it's valuable after all. Valuable basic materials. And one day we will be able to just process them correctly. Let's do this. I hope Julian is not starving yet. But I really want to bury these guys before we do anything else. There we go. Alrighty, nice. Quite happy to have a regular raid this time and not yet another mechanoid raid. Slaver! Yeah, well. Okay. We had that discussion in the comment section, and by now I'm absolutely convinced that the game is trying to. is It will be sending me slavers until I have finally gathered a new person for my colony. So let's see, Trebo, Taxonom, no. <laughs> Janitor, Shooting, no. Tactician, Medical and no violence. Are you kidding me? Well, <sighs> these decisions are all outright horrible, honestly. They're just, no people I would 
possibly ever want to recruit for my colonies, so... <sighs> nope. Can't do that. Simply can't do that. They're leaving the map because of the dangerous temperature really quickly. Nothing too unexpected. But at this point, I've seen so friggin' many trade caravans that were slavers that I am very convinced that the amount of people in your colony has an influence on what kind of trader hits your town. I wasn't too convinced about it yet because I originally thought that traders were always connected to the randomness of the storyteller. But by now we've had so many slavers, it's simply unrealistic to assume that this is supposed to be a normal thing. Like seriously, I can't believe that. I'm not sending Bishop out there to deconstruct things outside anymore because of his uh, missing leg, you know. But it's right now Apreme and the temperatures are quite okay. So that means we have to stock up on another colonist or nothing else will happen for us. So I'm going to fast forward now until a larger event hits town. And yet another trader hits town and guess what? <laughs> it's another slave ship. So if I had, I'm now out of any doubt. So we are going to see what kind of colonist we can get here. Another non-violent person. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to pick up the next best person there. And it's going to be Abema. Because I have no low, no more patience for this kind of event. We have to have more people and therefore welcome to the crowd, Abema. You're now one of us. So I'm going to assign her nevertheless to the guest area first because, uh, let's see. Well, her insulation ain't that horrible. Not good enough for the winter yet, but not super horrible either. Okay, so she doesn't have any particular qualities, so therefore she's going to be super bored. But at the same time, I picked her mainly because she had a decent shooting and melee skill. And therefore, I consider hey, pr her a pretty good fit for the colony. She will be just running around and mainly doing nothing the most, of the most part of the day. But that's okay for me. That's just completely okay for me. I'm going to use her workforce to stack up the penalties on the cannibalism uh, butchery thing. And beyond that, I think, well, she's going to wander and not do too much. But I just hope that this will lead to a point where now I can hope for more normal events because it had reached a quite comical point where I felt like I really don't feel like I need three colonists but the game seems to be very very convinced with the fact that I need three colonists so I'm I'm bowing down to that logic and now the next thing we really need will be steel I want to have a refining thingy what's it called again a biofuel refinery because I feel like this is the next best thing to go for because I won't be able to process all these uh, enemies into meals but I will be able to process them all into camp fuel and that's where I think is a good chance for me I'm going to release Abema now and see what she's going to do we butchered human-like. Yeah, I know. We do that all day. The downside of hiring Abema into my colony is that we now have to take way more care of... Um, what's it called again? Of our food production. At the same time, this hydroponics here is no longer able to run efficiently. I think I will be reinstalling Bishop's bed now to this place. And then we should be able to drop down one more hydroponics in here. But beyond that, I feel like 
there's not much more we can do we can drop down one here i cannot really move the uh, the multi-analyzer somewhere else so i could have optimized this grid a lot better sure but you know i still don't have enough steel to build all the necessary uh, ba basins that i want to have so i'm not too i'm not taking it too seriously here all right now let's see what happens that now that i got more than two people in my colony because this should change the course of events a little bit let's wait it out and just when i said that there came yet another slaver so well i don't know if the game is convinced that i need more people than i actually have here but i will not budge down and buy more slaves from these guys no i just don't want to we're just selling off these survival meals there but the main issue here is we don't really have enough overproduction anymore to satisfy the needs of the package survival meal production we will need more steel for that but luckily the nala federation is already on the run so they want to prepare for a while before they attack we're going to use that against them i got three people with assault rifles let's give them hell they're also rolling with assault rifles and a lot of other good weapons even a bolt action rifle uh, not assault rifle frag grenade i wanted to say frag grenades are for me among the most frightening weapons in the game sure they are slow and their accuracy is not that great but well their destructive power is really really impressive so i'm taking care of this guy's range mostly this griffith person is running Ooh, wait a sec looks like the bolt action rifle hey, wait, no, wait. is the range of a bolt action rifle actually higher than the assault rifle it seems so 37 that's more 31 dang all right so we're going to hide inside until this uh, these guys decide to attack because to me personally that's way too dangerous to stand in front of a squad which is able to outrange me just like that alrighty they mostly run low range weapons so we only have to be careful with that griffith person oh i can't stun sotos can i all right we don't have cover here which is really really bad i have to work on that in the future but work on cover without materials you know so that Maverick person is exactly the guy we need to take down first. If he is allowed to take any action on us, we're in deep, deep trouble. I'm going to take down the guy with the knife there too, because I really don't want them to take down my turrets. These turrets are way too valuable to lose them like that. All right, there we go trying to take down as many of them as possible that guy with the rifle is allowed to run away that's okay Whew. adrenaline <laughs> was a pretty nasty fight gotta admit but at the same time we gained grenades neutramines lots of cheap guns which we can smelter in so at least we gained a lot of steel out of that so Let's do the treatment here. All right. I'm very relieved that this went so good, honestly. So let's see and smelt this uh, stuff 10 times. You know what? Abema is exactly that kind of person I want to put onto crafting jobs like these. We're also doing the 
dirty work here, but I'm, I don't care. Alrighty. The higher the range of our enemies grows, the more scary the situations will be. Okay, Bishop went into a daze because he observed a corpse. Okay, I can't really allow that to happen. I need to arrest him here because he has to sew out the hydroponics. It's so important that he does that we're going to use the good old prisoner trick. It's a classic which allows you to um, to cancel out mental breakdowns. And now he went catatonic. Not cool. Okay, so we have to put one of our people without any talent onto the growing job. I hope we won't be starving, but I can't uh, I can't say for sure. Somebody care to rescue Bishop? It's pretty brutal. I never had such a instant uh, smackdown for something like that. Never. Like, never. <laughs> Usually they were like, if anything, breaking down shortly after again, but not like, I'm now lying down and pretend I'm dead. No. Haven't seen that happen too often, honestly. But at least we still have two people to keep the show running. We have 300 units of food. We have so many dead people out there, which can be used in a pinch for our survival that I'm not really that nervous, honestly. Sure, it's not cool, but it's also something we can definitely survive. The only thing which is really important is that we're uh, putting somebody on the doctoring uh, duty. I said put some somebody on the doctoring duty. All right, I'm going to send Julian to the other jobs you, um, that are usually are that usually Bishop does because Julian is a fast learner. So therefore I see a high chance of him adapting into the new jobs quite quickly. It's the best shot I got. I guess there will be food poisonings, but, you know, rather have those food poisonings than have no food at all. We could also go for a Nutri-Paste dispenser at some point, but let's, let's just see how it plays out. Alright, the first batch of rice plants is ready. Ugh. Hospitality for nobles. Ha! Sure thing. But... He wants to come with one ally, even. Nah. Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. Not gonna happen. So, well, let's just hope that Bishop will be back on his feet sometime soon, but I'd say it's a good training for a good old Julian as well, because this way he's just doing his job, too. Let's see. Food poisoning chance is 3%. Well, it's not that horrible at all. Only three of hundred meals will be food poisoning people, so could be worse, you know. It's probably not the worst to have some extra person here able to do these uh, things. All right, we did use a ton of steel though to refurbish the barrels. Is that really this costly? I mean, how much does she take? Three, four, two shots. My god, these things are inefficient. Good god. No, no. I'm just deciding that I'm going to flick them off and only keep them on when I really feel like I need that. Because the amount of steel I'm wasting on my defenses is just insane. If any if every double salvo is actually two units of steel or more, ugh. Not cool. Not cool at all. Okay. So, at least Julian is now on plans too. Okay. 
let's see what will happen beyond these things. I mean, at some point there should be a bulk goods trader again. I mean, I even picked up a third colonist now to counteract these and these things. And it has to bring me something at some point. I don't know when that point will be. Oh yeah, psychic drone. Let's go. <laughs> but at least it gives me the feeling that we are slowly progressing somewhere. I do like the fact that Julian is actually gaining something. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is uh, growing slowly too much for me. Because I don't know how many years we now have endured, but there's seriously nothing, nothing good happening so far since I don't know how many months, if not years. That's just uh, outright outrageous. So what I'm going to do now is I'll keep Julian on the plant duty because this way he learned that as well, because it dawned on me that it might be foolish to have all the talents allocated on one colonist and, uh, you know. And this way we might be able to to do this as a duo job or I don't know what. The only thing I do know is that my food stocks were dwindling really rapidly during Bishop's absence, so. A exotic goods trader. I don't know why the game is doing that to me. The only thing I do know is it is doing that to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there is again nothing I can sell to these people, so uh, we just have to cope with it. Well, adorable muffalo, take care of three muffalos. Are you kidding me? I won't do that. Okay, so I actually did now bring up a third colonist to see if that's actually really just bad luck because I don't have enough colonists, but I'm losing my I'm losing my faith in my theory. I have men, I have uh, formulated at the beginning of this episode because it it, it certainly looks like there's uh, no real method to this madness except for my bad luck. I don't know. The worst part about it is I don't really have any materials left to build anything. I. It dawns on me that my turrets are really no good defenses at all. I am that close to using my plasteel for some barricades. Also considering silver <laughs> as a barricade material. Uh, situation is growing really hard and for me. I mean, we will try and see what the next trade ship will be. And let's see, I'll fast forward until then. A couple of days later, finally the summer is over. Well, finally. <laughs> but we don't see any changes whatsoever. The only changes that are noticeable are that Julian is slowly learning his plant skill better and better. He's also growing into a better and better cook. That fast learner trait, I should have I should have used that possibly a while before I did. But I also noticed that my Food consumption is now pretty equal on the point, like equal to that what I produce. So we're now not even a e not even able anymore to produce extra surplus survival rations, which is bad on one side, but also pretty cool. Well, no, not cool, but I am also a lot more powerful in my fighting force because Ebema is certainly a force to be reckoned with. But beyond that, I'm still waiting for other events to happen. By now we have completely researched the spaceship parts, almost, only 300 points for the Johnson Tanaka drive left, but there's really not much to 
to be mentioned here. So there's another solar flare. Well, okay. Good thing that the solar flare hit town before, right after our harvest. That's actually very, very nice. And it pays off quite good to have Julian as my plant guy here. I keep trying to assign him less to the harvesting jobs and more onto the sowing jobs to kick up his skill even more. But yeah, let's see what happens next. I just wanted to, oh, a outlaw camp quest. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I just wanted to drop a little notion at the passing of seasons. See you guys on the next event. So, with the passing of seasons, we have, of course, more mechanites, uh, mechanites, mechanoids rolling towards us. The mechanoids are the only enemies which let me designate the power here, or let me flick the switch on these things, because I feel like mechanoids are a really good excuse to use your turrets, especially since the mechanoids always come with materials to restock your barrels with. All right, we're using the burden skill to take down the scyther more quickly. Should have used the power, uh, the charge rifle too, but well, now I feel like it would be a waste of time to go for that, so. Let's see how far is the pikeman away. Pretty close. It's going to be in range to attack us quite soonish. But we have taken down these guys, so let's wait around the corner and see how, how, how hypothermic we are. Well, Abema is my worst insulated character, so I take her as a measure for the rest of us. Alright, Julian needs to go there. Let's stun that thing. Alright. For some reason I turned off friendly fire, but my mini turrets are able to hit us. Okay. Well, that went good. We still used a lot of sh uh, lots of shots here, but that's okay. Alright, Julian gets a chance to treat us some wounds. I like that. There's the next slave ship. I don't know what the thoughts behind this are, but it's uh, starting to really annoy me because, you know, I'm literally bound by the fact that I don't have any chances whatsoever to gain any building materials, but I, I can only say such is life and keep going because we don't see any options to change that. At the same time, I can Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Now I can't even say anymore it's because I don't have enough colonists. The worst part about it is I don't see any chance whatsoever from my side to increase the amount of colonists even further because, you know, three people are my limit. My food is on a stable amount with that, but if I would add more colonists now into the mix, I feel like I would be instantly losing the balance and therefore it's not good for us. So, dang. Go away old school partners. I really need the necessary steel to build myself a biofuel refinery. That will be the next big leap because I wish I had a, I would have done that a while before because with these I with this building I can just refine human meat into chem fuel and as far as I know chem fuel is a resource which has been bought by all manner of different traders. This wouldn't really change anything with my issues that I still need building material but at least I could trade more often. Until then I can only say I have to accept it and let's just hope that the next few ships, traders, caravans will be less 
bad for us. But until then, I gotta say, we fought a couple of really good fights today. And thank you guys so much for watching. This is the end of today's episode. I mean, it can't be going on like this forever. But at least we got a new face into the colony. Abema is a really good fighter. And therefore, I think she is a good fit to the colony. Also, she has a pretty decent social skill. So... It's not my fair. She's not my favorite pick, that's for sure. But at the same time, I feel like we could have ran with a lot of worse people there. All right. So drop me a comment down below if you have any ideas what I could do or any thoughts you want. We might want to share. I'm more than happy to listen to them. And as usual, leave a thumbs up if you want to support the series. I'd be more than grateful if you did. And leave a subscription on the channel. I do daily videos, so. If you like that kind of content, just subscribe, turn on those notifications, and you will be not missing a thing in the future. And just uh, for the end, just just wish me good luck with those traders, will you? Thank you. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.